Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here at Earth and Sky on this beautiful Yuletide morning. It's actually time to turn the wheel again as we're coming into Yule. It's a beautiful time of year. If you have not already, please like our Facebook page. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. We always like your likes and comments as always. And now we've actually gone from the harvest festivals through Samhain and now we're up into Yule. So that beautiful time of Christmas, my, one of my favorite times of year. I think I've said that a couple times about my favorite time of year. So I'll say one of my favorite, absolute favorite times of year. And I love this season because everybody gets together. Your friends and family are gathered in close. It's a time for planning as we have gone from spring through summer to harvest. Harvest is where you were harvesting your dreams. All of those plans that you made last winter have come up and they've grown. You watered them, watered them and brought them into fruition, harvested them, which means now it's time to plant again because we're in the planting season of winter. As it gets darker outside, it's time to come inside and figure out what your goals are. See who you are and what you want for this next year of your life. Also a couple of kind of cool now. I wanted to say congratulations to my husband who's out there and uh, because he was just ordained for the first time as a minister. I was ordained for the third time as a minister. But now it's through the sanctuary of the beloved Reverend Daniel Chesbro. This is actually the second book that he has authored, The Gospel of Thomas. It's kind of an interesting read. His first book is on the Order of the Melchizedek, which is the order that we were both ordained in in New York City this last weekend. So if you're interested in learning more. It's kind of an interesting read. You can find either of those books, I think, on Amazon. He just wrote his third book, too. Uh, but we're going to go right back into Yule because the, we did a video last year at Yule as we were talking. We were really focusing on the celebrations of it each season. And um, so I was wanting to touch on some different things that we didn't mention in that last video. So did you know that sometimes Yule can actually last for 12 days instead of just one day? Sometimes people will start the celebration the evening before the winter solstice. So the winter solstice is usually December 20th or December 21st, but it can be anywhere between the 20th and the 23rd. It's the longest night of the year. So whatever night happens to be where you have the sun setting the earliest and the dawn rising the latest is the winter solstice. So sometimes people will celebrate the evening before on what's called Mother's Night. So it's a good way to honor the women in your life, to honor women that maybe are ancestors, maybe they're here still, maybe they passed, and it's a nice way to honor the teachings that they've brought and bring out the feminine within yourself too. Whether you're male or female, we all have both aspects within us, and so it's a good way to really embrace those feminine aspects on Mother's Night. In some traditions in the North northern countries like Norway, Scandinavia, they'll actually stay up all night on Mother's Night just kind of meditating and celebrating the women in their life and the lessons that they've learned from women in their life. So that would count as the first day of Yule if you're doing the 12 days of Yule. Um, Yule, some, if you're just celebrating the one day, it's usually the winter solstice. So December 21st and um, it's a really good night to just kind of go within because this is where we start planning what you want to go on in your life and it's that um, light returning as well because it's the darkest night of the year that means the light is coming back so for those of you that really prefer the sun and the light to be out a little bit more sometimes it's harder to get out for work when it's so dark and when you're coming home and it's dark again it makes it a little bit more challenging so you can celebrate at the winter solstice knowing the sun is finally returning so we have a lot of cold months ahead of us but the dawn is going to start waking up a little bit sooner and it's going to stay light about a minute or two later every couple days you'll see that transition starting at the solstice so we're doing that transition in ancient times they would celebrate this as the sun god returning because they would see that as bringing the light back so in a way that you can kind of bring that into your own life now is think about what you want to return in your life what do you have what aspects of your life do you want to return that maybe you feel like you have 
lost or you've forgotten. We all get so busy in life with different things and we change our focus. So what aspects have you maybe forgotten about that you want to bring back? Think about what you want to bring to return to you because the aspects are on your side to kind of bring that back as you're starting to plan your life for this next year, um, entering into these winter, winter months. So it's all about planting the seeds, planning what you want, to plant the seeds for your life, to manifest the life that you want, you really need to know yourself as well. So figuring out what you need to know about yourself, maybe making some lists or journal by the fire if you have a fireplace, can be a nice cozy way to do it in the winter, or they have on uh, some of the TV channels now that fireplace, you can even put that on as a virtual fireplace. And imagine the crackling of the fire while you journal and think about what you want to have in your life. Who do you want to be? What are your goals? Who do you want to be around you in life? And start writing those down because writing is so powerful. It's the first step of really planning your life and getting those seeds planted so you can harvest what you want next year as the harvest comes back around. So knowing yourself, knowing what you want, writing it down helps you really get that focus so that you can create it. So many people, when you ask them, well, what do you want? They have no idea. So how do you expect to create the goals you want if you're not quite sure what those goals are? So plan, know yourself, know what you want. Really do that gratitude box. If you haven't already started, do a gratitude box. So where you're putting something that made you smile that day, something you're thankful for, something that made you laugh that day, and drop it in a box with the date on it. And then when you get to this time of year this is the perfect time to look in the box and really see what happened over the last year and if you are ever low at certain times of the year if you're just having kind of a down day it's a really good time to reach in the box and go oh I totally forgot about this great thing that happened or that thing that made me smile or the people in my life that really warmed my day it's a really nice easy way to pick yourself up and whenever you focus on gratitude you're bringing more of those blessings into your life because what you focus on is what you create and more of that builds up in your life too. So as the light is returning, use it to really shine on your plans and to radiate in your life and feel that just radiating. Feel the love that abounds this time of year. Don't focus on the stress and the, the congestion and all of the hassles of certain things that sometimes come up at this time of year. Instead, focus on the light that's radiating in and really see yourself as a radiant person. See yourself as some that kind, compassionate person. See whatever your traits are that you love about yourself. Acknowledge those. Look in the mirror and really acknowledge those. Let your confidence shine and embrace the beauty that's all around you at this time of year. That too is going to help you as you're planning out what you want to happen in this next year of your life. Um, so there's also some evidence that was really interesting. As I mentioned, the 12 days of Yule um, that was celebrated again in the northern countries like Norway and Scandinavia in ancient times and it's kind of started to come around and be modernized a little bit and so when they've modernized it they've brought in some very interesting aspects so it's certainly up to you if you want to celebrate it for two or three days but if you're doing the 12 days it falls really well this year because it would be Mother's Night the evening of the 20th and going into the 21st and then on the 22nd or the the evening of the 20th and then on the 21st would actually be the winter solstice which um, we've talked a lot about last year in the video but that's all about what I just said with the light returning and seeing what you want to return in your life what seeds you're wanting to plant really really just going within and then what they've done to it now the 12th night would actually be um, the 31st, so New Year's Eve, and that ties in, Twelfth Night a lot of times ties in with, uh, if you've heard the song, Here We Go O-Wassailing, where they, last year we had a lot of fun with a Yule celebration with the wassail drink, two of our members made uh, that drink, which was fabulous, and, um, and that tradition really is about going around and wishing others well, and wishing for abundance and peace and blessings and joy on your neighbors and on your friends and for yourself and for your land and so it really brings that tradition in and so many people have New Year's Eve parties that kind of bring everybody together so it's a little bit of that tradition still carried on too 
And then those nine days that are in the middle is where a little bit of the modernization comes in. They've actually added in some aspects that make it resemble a little bit of Hanukkah or Kwanzaa where people will light one candle on each night. So you'd start on Mother's Night on the 20th and then each night you light it for a specific purpose. So Mother's Night and then the Winter Solstice. And then the third night is where you start the nine virtues. Um, bringing the nine noble virtues into your life, which is really kind of a cool concept. So if you're doing this, you're going to want to spend a little bit of time meditating, thinking about what it is you want to plan for your life, where you want to go in your life in this next year, what traits you want to bring in, and then see each night how the aspects of the night will affect you and how that you can bring these virtues in to both help you grow as a person and also help assist your plans too. So the third night, the virtue is courage. So when you're thinking about whatever your plans are, in Mother's Night you've honored the lessons you've learned from the women in your life and then on the winter solstice you're thinking about that light returning, allowing yourself to radiate, being confident within yourself, confident in knowing yourself and writing down what it is you want for the next year and then the third night with courage you're really meditating on the noble virtue of courage how do you need to bring up courage so that you can achieve your goals so you can create the life of your dreams as you light that candle imagine courage is just flowing within you so if you need a little bit of a boost of courage to help you really reach those plans then use that energy as you light the candle meditate on it a little bit breathe in the aspects of courage the fourth night is going to be truth so whatever we do in life if you do it with truth with honesty that's the best way to really be um, the best that you can be if you're truthful with yourself first then you're not going to be fumbling over what it is that you want or how to achieve your goals because you can always fall back on that honesty and then the the fifth night is going to be the third virtue which is honor so what better way to have virtue in your life than to have honor so as you're thinking about what your goals are and what seeds you're planting for the next year how do those plans fall in line with being an honorable person and how can you bring in from the universe, the aspects of honor into your life to help you fulfill your dreams, to fulfill your wishes, maybe to help others around you as well in your goals. And then the fourth virtue, which is the sixth night, is fidelity. And so this can be, a lot of times we think of fidelity as faithfulness to a person. It can also be faithfulness to a cause. So on this night, it might be that you're saying that you're going to be faithful to yourself, to your dreams, to your goals. So whatever it is that you're wanting to create or dream or manifest in your life, how can you learn to really honor yourself and be faithful to that and know that even if life gets challenging or if somebody says you can't do it or you're not able, then you say, no, 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 I can. I believe in myself and I'm going to keep going because I know that I can do this and I can live the life of my dreams. So having that aspect of fidelity in there. Then the seventh night is hospitality because whenever you're wanting to manifest your dreams and move forward in life, if you're hospitable to the people around you, you're going to find life a lot more joyful. <laughs> and so really just bringing in that, that aspect of knowing that we're all in this together. There's no competition really in life. There's enough for everybody. So the virtue, the noble virtue of hospitality can help bring all of that together. And then the eighth night is about discipline. So whenever you're trying to work for something in your life, sometimes that can be a hard one, being disciplined and continuing on the path. So you might get, this is where a lot of people will make their New Year's resolutions, is what some people will call it instead. They'll make those resolutions and by March, they've just gone out the window. They did not have the discipline to keep going forward. And then by May, they forgot they even wrote it down. <laughs> and so having that discipline is going to really help you carry it forward in life so that as you come into the harvest season, where you're in August, September, October, you're going, yes, I did the work. I'm cultivating these results. I am on track with the next best part of my life. And then the ninth night of Yule would be industriousness. So this is that, it kind of ties in with discipline, but it's more about activity, being busy, keeping plunging forward, finding out what motivates you. So maybe as you're planting the seeds, you're figuring out what you want to have in life. Also think about on this night, on the ninth night, 
what would motivate you? What would keep you on track for the days where you just feel like maybe you don't want to have the time or you don't feel like continuing to follow through with it? What will keep you motivated to want to keep moving forward? So draw out a picture in your mind of what it's going to feel like when you have whatever you're wanting to manifest in your life. And then you can keep going back to that image when you feel like you might just be diverting onto a different path or it's not worth it. And so you can remember to be busy, be active, stay engaged and bring your dreams into fruition. The eighth virtue on the 10th night of Yule is self-reliance. So this is a big one where if people feel like they fall into being victims sometimes in life, if you realize that you can really be self-reliant, it doesn't matter what anybody else says or does or believes or thinks or tries to put on you because you truly have everything you need within you already. And so you have everything you need to manifest your goal, to achieve your dreams, to be the best person that you can be and have the life that you really want. It's gonna take a little bit of work. It's gonna be sometimes retraining your brain to believe in all of the good things that you can bring into yourself and realizing that with that self-reliance that you can create it. You really have everything you need within yourself already. And then on the 11th night of Yule, so this is the last of those noble virtues, is perseverance. And so that also is, that's a big thing, just sticking with it, just realizing. And then what I would also add to the perseverance is sometimes as we're going along through the year, we're making our plans about Yule and then all the way in through March, where we start to turn into spring and later March. But as you're making those plans, you're drawing out a map and a picture of what you want things to be and making out... Uh, how your timeline is gonna go, where you want to see certain goals happen. But you might, as you get into June or July, realize you need to tweak certain things. So I would also add some flexibility and adaptability in there too, knowing that if you feel like as you're going along, you wanna change it just a little bit, that's okay too, because the power is within you and it's all about what you want to create in your life, how you want to envision it, and knowing that you can do it is the biggest thing. So I hope this helps you with the 12 Nights of Yule. I'll actually list under the video, I'll have all of those virtues so you can have a list of each of those 12 nights, what they are and how to, uh, and then you can think about how to bring them into your life. So it's um, just to recap very quickly. So you have um, first night is Mother's Night, then the winter solstice, and then courage, truth, honor, fidelity, hospitality, discipline, industriousness, self-reliance, perseverance, and then the 12th night is that celebration, like wassailing and going out and just sharing that love and that joy and that peace and that those blessings and goodwill um, for abundance and whatever it is you want in life on the 12th night, New Year's Eve. So I hope that helps you with understanding a little bit more about you and how to bring that into your life. And I will look forward to seeing you next week as we talk a little bit more about Christmas, the full moon cycles, and uh, keep plunging ahead with all of that. So if you have any questions, suggestions for topics, we always love to hear from you. Feel free to message us. If you're a little shy and you don't want to put it in the comments down below, we can let definitely talk to you either way. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Have a great day.